Da, 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 da. Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today is day three of Raw Food Week, and to introduce today's guest, who will be broadcasting live all the way from Israel, yeah. is Dr. Doug Graham, who's getting a very important phone call. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> the phone just doesn't ever... I'm so sorry. That's okay. Airplane mode. Airplane mode is always a no, good thing. It's, it's a house phone. Oh, it's a house phone. And my, people still have those? Yeah, my, my phone is on airplane mode, but I never expected this to ring. That's so but funny. We're getting a slew of, of um, what do they call it? You know, the automated calls. Yeah, automated calls. And they're trying to, they're acting like they're the IRS and they're acting like they're whatever they are but and i'm sure i i don't have any clue who that was so That's i'm okay. so sorry one more time for the for the big ticket well so who have you got for us today dr graham because i know you chose the people all this week of people that you really uh want to learn from and want our people to to, to get to know so who is today's candidate uh aj you're you're imperturbable it's wonderful it's so lovely to You've done this a lot and bless you for being such a professional. Uh, you know, in my career, in over 40 years of, of being vegan and vegetarian and more than 30 plus years in the raw food movement, um, I've met a lot of people and given a lot of presentations to so many audiences. It's, it's a blessing, a real blessing. And when Ifat first came to me and, and our paths first crossed, I have to admit, I was just shocked. Her level of capability was so high. Her understanding, the comprehension, and then even more the application. And we talk about why people go vegetarian. You know, they give you the same three reasons why people go vegetarian and, and pretty much the same three for going vegan when actually the fourth reason is never mentioned. And the fourth reason is the main reason. The fourth reason is because most people can't afford not to be vegetarian around the world. And that's where, that's where they become vegetarian because plants are a lot less expensive to eat in the present and in the future, you know, so of, of each of us, so each of our lives. Uh, there's many reasons why people go raw as well. And it's typically the same reasons. It's your health, you know, it's the environment. It's because it seems like the truth. But the, but the overwhelming outstanding reason why people tend to go raw is because they're so smart. They're intelligent. They can see it and they can go, wow, well, if this is the case and if this is what's really going on and I've given cooked food all these chances, like, and they're smart enough to see that raw food is a way to move forward for them. And all you have to do is apply it right, which we're explaining all week long. Well, when Ifa came to one of my retreats, she had the astounding pleasure, and so did I, of, of she was making food for me as part of the chefing program that she went through. And again, I was just so impressed that I invited her to write a Simply Delicious book she eventually did write one of our Simply Delicious books um, for all the Jewish holidays, raw food, 80, 10, 10, for all the Jewish holidays. It's an, it's outstanding. It's just an outstanding book and I can't wait till part two comes out. But a capable, a capable person, I've never met a more capable person. I can honestly tell you, I'm gonna hush because you wanna listen to everything she says. Uh, I look forward to spending time with you in Israel, as they say, next year in Israel um, at the Israeli Fruit Fest. Hopefully that's going to come to pass. And when it does, Ifat will be the one bringing it to us. So this is a person who just accepts responsibilities and like cream, just always rises to the top. So Ifat, it's all your stage. Wow, well, that's quite an introduction. I can't wait to to learn from you and Lishana Haba Avi Oh yeah, you get it in Hebrew. 
Uh, wow, Dr. Dad, I'm just uh, so thankful for um, having this good relationship with you and getting to know you. And uh, I'm so proud of the path that uh, my life took. Uh, and uh, it was um, a lot of it had, had to do because uh, you brought 801010 uh, to, um, to my knowledge. Um, and uh, AJ, I'm very happy to be here too. Um, I, I saw you and on your videos and I was always thoroughly impressed of how authentic you are and how warm and how um, humane, vulnerable and, and um, it was always a pleasure watching you. So I'm thoroughly excited to, to create this connection with you and to be here and to share the message of, uh, of health. I, I can't wait. And somebody named Lily typed a message in Hebrew. I just put it in the chat because I'm not that good at oh, reading Oh, I'm it. seeing it. I can try. Every call. word in, is on the rock. <laughs> call me, call me I, I can't read it, but I think. Oh, I can't believe you can read the uh, Hebrew too. Oh, I wow. can read it. I just don't know what I'm saying. Call me lach. Basela. Basela. Yifat malachi. It's just too small is what it is. It's not that it's not Hebrew. It's just small. We <laughs> might get some of these in Hebrew today. That's so neat. Have you, oh, were you born and raised in Israel? Yes, yes, yes. I was. Uh, I'm 40 years old. I was born and raised here in the middle of Israel. I'm a mom of two kids now, um, four and a half years old and one and a half years old, a boy and a girl. Um, and uh, I've been on the Ruffle path for the last uh, nine years now. This is my 10th year. It's not a long time in Ruffle years. You know, it takes time to get a hold of this lifestyle and understand what's going on and get, um, uh, get uh, to be uh, stable in it. So even though I have experience, I always feel that each year I'm improving and learning. Uh, I'm a raw food and natural health consultant. This is what I do. And I run the 801010 Israeli uh, Facebook uh, community, uh, which has uh, 35,000 members. That's incredible. That's incredible. Not all of them are raw, but they're, they're investigating. Yeah. Well, you do not look 40. You look maybe half your age. And I'm curious, you have young children. Are they engaging this lifestyle as well? Well, mostly, um, um, mostly the vegan and the mostly healthy vegans, meaning whole food vegans, but they go to kindergarten and preschool now. So that was my compromise. By the way, they're the only uh, vegans in their preschool and kindergarten, which is kind of amazing when you look at Israel at 2021, where almost 8% of the population is vegan now in Israel. So I would expect there would be more. I guess as they grow up, they will meet other vegans uh, their age. Uh, and they, they eat a ton of fruit. It's no problem. It didn't, didn't take any effort, just, uh, just that it would be there. Were you vegan before going raw? Because when I'm hearing these stories, it's really interesting to me that many people made the leap from whatever their diet was to 100% raw without like any steps in between of trying other types of vegan diets. So I was vegan for a pretty short time before going raw. I was vegan uh, like, let's say, half a year before going raw. And that's because I was in such an obsession of an investigation of health. Um, and then my, my lifestyle was always pretty healthy. Uh, so I thought, right? Uh, I saw Gary Rofsky's uh, known YouTube uh, lecture and uh, I went vegan without even understanding that, I'm, that I went vegan. And uh, not long after that, my asthma healed. Most, most of it healed. So I understood uh, I'm doing something in the right direction. And um, I was exposed to uh, Victoria Butenko's books about uh, green uh, smoothies, and I was convinced to try them in my lifestyle. And I found uh, uh, more energy and uh, vibrancy and uh, losing some weight. And I really enjoyed it. So I continued to investigate. And then I heard of 801010. And once I heard of it, I was hooked. Even though mentally I wasn't ready for such a big move, then I, I was hooked and I couldn't go back. And uh, it took me a few more good months to read 80 and 10. By the time I read the book, I understood that I was imp implementing it quite uh, thoroughly. Uh, but I have to say that until today, I'm not a 100% uh, raw food eater. My, my lifestyle is, is totally raw food. I think it would be 25, uh, I'm sorry, 95% of what I eat would be raw foods. Uh, but occasionally on family gatherings and dinners, I would eat something cooked. It would always be a whole food. It, was all, it would always be a vegetable. 
uh, like zucchini or, or um, a potato or a yam or something like that. And it, was always, it would always be next to a meal that consists of raw food. But I still don't have such a, um, such a binary um, decision of uh, only eating raw foods, although this is totally where I want to be. And I believe that in 10 years from now, I won't be eating uh, anything else uh, rather than, uh, than uh, something that's uncooked. But right now, there's something that socially feels um, uh, comfortable and uh, it, um, it takes such a small percentage of my, um, of my lifestyle that uh, I live with it quite peacefully. Yeah. I'm guessing you're Jewish because we talked about it. So I am too. And you know, it's interesting to me that the Jewish religion is one that, in my opinion, in so many ways is rooted in compassion. And yet you would think that more Jewish people in general would go vegan because some of the practices in, in you know, like the kaparot, uh, the way, you know, they say, well, the, the way the cow is killed, it, it's not killed humanely. I mean, if you're killing it, it's not humane. That's how I feel about it. And so I really appreciate people like Dr. Richard Schwartz, who lives in Israel, or Rabbi Shmuley, who's trying to get the message out to rabbis that, that this is the way to go if, if this right. Judaism is your faith. Right. So there's a big movement of uh, religious people that are going vegan and understanding compassion and understanding that uh, eating animals can't uh, be kosher because uh, it's, not, uh, it's not humane to do it. Uh, however, I'm not religious as well. And there are a lot of, uh, of non-religious people that understand uh, the importance of health right now in this world. I think that uh, people in this world don't know a lot about health and they probably need to know a lot uh, the most. Yeah. You know, you know, it's interesting because I, I'm actually really thankful. I was raised Orthodox Jewish and that means that I was kosher from birth and I'm still kosher. I mean, like when you're raw or vegan, I mean, you're basically kosher, but I was so happy that I wasn't exposed to animals the way other people were. Like for instance, I never ate pork. I never ate, you know, like cheeseburgers or pepperoni pizza because we didn't mix milk with meat. There were so many animals we just didn't eat like pigs and clams and all the, you know, all the, s the shellfish. So I never got exposed to those tastes. So I never developed, you can't develop taste preference of something you never ate. So so what do we eat? You know, a little chicken, a little whatever, but, but I never got ingrained in liking animal products because there were so few that we actually ate as Orthodox Jews. So I'm thankful for that. You know what Israel is like uh, to eat more, even more than uh, chicken or uh, some kind of those uh, animal food dishes? They like olive oil. I grew up on olive oil. So instead of the land of milk and honey, milk and honey, it's the land of extra virgin olive oil. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> oh boy, but you know how to make food without oil. Not only do I know, I would never eat oil right now. I think it's one of the biggest uh, hundred um, this century's uh, scams. Oh yeah, that triumph of marketing over science. And your skin is beautiful. And the people that eat oil, it shows on their skin. I mean, it really does. And one of the ways you get rid of acne is to stop eating so much fat and oil. We have a nice comment from a live viewer that says, thank you for bringing raw vegan chefs and speakers to your channel. I've been raw for almost four years and I've healed dozens of chronic symptoms. I'm now on day four of melon grape fast and feel great. So yeah, a lot of people have been tuning in. It was a very wow. hot topic. But we, we like what we like to see how you make it work, though, because, you know, people are thinking, what am I supposed to eat? Right. Just, it says eat fat looks amazing. Ah, thank you. Wow. Thanks. So uh, what I thought about sharing with you today is what I eat in a day. It's a kind of I like that uh, Shari also did it. And I really enjoy the Shari's and uh, Tim's uh, shows the other night. Um, and I, I'll take you through uh, an average day. And I think I'll, I wanna show you in the slides the typical daily menu, and then we'll, uh, uh, we'll prepare it together, okay? Sounds good. So, all right, I'm sharing it right now. Uh, I just hit the green screen share button. Okay, uh, soon to be shared. Okay, just a second. It always works perfectly in the rehearsal, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does, but it's on, it's on right now. There we go. Just Tell me that you can see it. Can you see it? Perfect. Okay, 
So this is going to be a day's worth of eating. And it's, it's kind of my routine. And I, I'll take you through four meals, which I usually break my day into four meals, sometimes three. And it's morning, lunch, a snack at around four o'clock and then dinner. And, and let's uh, see what's, uh, what's on here. So uh, breakfast would be, um, would be a watermelon this season at summer. They're great and I just love them. And lunch would be always a starter of fruit. And then what I chose to bring you is uh, some kind of a dish with a, a whole lot of green, uh, of leafy greens. And we're going to make it today. It's a green leaf uh, sushi. Um, and uh, I always start with a starter of fruit. I'll talk about it a bit later. And then for a snack at around uh, four or something, if I'm hungry, I would probably have some fruit, some, some peaches, like let's say uh, three or four peaches. Uh, and uh, it could be any fruit of, of the season and followed by it would be dinner. Uh, dinner, I usually like to have fruit, no fat, because I, uh, I feel more energized when I, um, when I don't have fats in dinner, a dinner, I'd rather have them at the middle of the day. Uh, and uh, today we're going to see a green smoothie bowl. Uh, I sometimes have ice creams for dinner, but that's what we're going to see today. So that's, that's kind of a daily menu um, uh, at this season, at summer in Israel. Uh, and I have here the list of ingredients. And if, uh, if anyone that's uh, watching us wants to take a screen a shot of these, they, they can have them, but they can also find those in a free recipe book of mine if they want to. So let's see together. What do you think? Are we ready to start? Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to the cutting board here. So I just want to go through um, amounts of things that I eat and, uh, and when I eat them. So that's my watermelon. That would be, that would be my watermelon bowl for uh, the morning. It's a pretty big one. It's kind of, I think it's a third of a medium watermelon. And then um, I really like eating uh, hydrating fruit in the morning. And I start eating late at around 11, let's say so, because I love exercising in the morning. It's my favorite thing. Um, I think it's, it's such a good feeling to exercise. Once you slept well, you got up, you eliminated, excuse me for the information, but you eliminated and then your bowel is empty, but your muscles are um, uh, full of glycogen from yesterday's foods. So that's the best feeling to work out. And I either run or I do some uh, power workouts or um, I work out with a, this uh, Oculus Quest. Do you know this VR thing? I don't I know. What... VR goggles. That is so interesting. My husband got them and he started using them. And once I did, I fell in love, especially when it's not in Israel. So I put them on and now I like to box. So I kind of box with myself and I, can't, I bet I look ridiculous, but uh, I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> the, the last two speakers said that Dr. Graham taught you, you have to earn your meals. Do you earn your meals? Well, I heard they said that, and I know that Dr. Graham said, says it, and uh, I fully accept the concept. Uh, however, I don't want to feel deprived that I have to earn my meal before I eat it. So as a lifestyle, I want to earn my meal because I wake up and I'm energized and, and I'm looking for, uh, for something to play with. I, I want to exercise. But if I'm hungry, I will just go and eat. Uh, and I'll exercise later, or I want to exercise uh, some days. I usually do because I like it, and it's important to me, and it's a lifestyle. So that's my approach to it. Could you imagine if most people had to earn their meals, we would have a lot of people not eat. Because <laughs> most yeah. people don't exercise. And I mean, I, Maybe. It's, yeah. in this country, it's like, I think something like I read was statistic once only 6% of people in the United States actually exercise every day. That'd be a lot of people. You know, I always said that it, they should have it like, uh, in order for you to like watch TV, you have to be doing something like a treadmill or a bike and it wouldn't work without it. Then we'd probably be able to get people to exercise. But no, I agree what you say about elimination. That's why I host something called the GI Health Summit because I want to make it like okay to talk about poop. But if I don't poop, I just, I don't get hungry until like, I just cannot eat unless I poop. That's just the way it is. Wow. So you're connected to something uh, with your digestion. Yeah. So uh, pooping is very good. I mean, it's not poop that causes all the problems. Right. I also think we should talk about if we kind of try to hide it. Uh, pooping sounds uh, disgusting or smelly, but uh, if you feel this way about your poop, then something is wrong with what you eat probably. 
Right. Well, that's the nice thing about raw food is that, I mean, you can't be, it, it, I, I can't imagine anyone unless they have some serious GI dysfunction being constipated on a raw food diet because you're getting so much fiber and water. It would be virtually impossible to, to be constipated. Right. right. So anyway, that would be my uh, breakfast usually. And uh, it takes me uh, like two minutes to cut it or I either eat it as a whole and that would be breakfast. And then I go and I uh, work. And once I'm hungry again, I would do a starter of fruit and the sushi that we'll make now. And uh, my starter of fruit would either be like these three, four bananas, or it could be a plate of other fruit. I'm going to um, come closer and show you. It could just be a plate of oranges and uh, grapes or whatever's in season. And I like uh, juicy fruits before I eat. So. So once I ate my fruit, I'm kind of waiting to eat something more savory, and that would be the sushi. And I'm going to show you how I make the sushi. Now, I'm a working uh, mom of two kids, and I don't like to uh, spend too much time in making my meals. I don't like to be behind the counter too much. So I kind of tend to keep it simple. And then um, what I'm going to make now is the sushi. I have some uh, raw nori. Um, rolls and I usually uh, eat five of those and uh, so this is what I use for the sushi and I really like uh, getting my greens and getting some um, uh, some um, some vegetables in so my sushi would always be made out of the salad what's in the salad could change any day but uh, but I always have a salad so this is what I have uh, for this um, for this sushi that we're going to have I have here uh, some uh, spinach, it's already cut, and some uh, lettuce, uh, different kinds of uh, lettuce, and I have some zucchini that's, that's uh, shredded. And I have a spiralizer, but I really like this grater. Uh, my grandmother gave it to me, so it's kind of old, but it works. And what I do, I show you, I just want to show you how fast uh, it goes to shred those vegetables and make this salad because. Sometimes you can work like half an hour on a salad. I don't have time for that. So what I do is just shred the vegetables and then it's more comfortable to get them in the sushi. And I'm gonna do it with like a, a few cucumbers. And they're kind of nice in the sushi because they make it uh, wet and, that's, uh, and moist and that's nice. Yesterday, Shari spiralized cucumber, and I can't stop thinking about like how good it must taste. I have a spiralizer, yes. I just don't have any uh, yes. right now. In Israel, we get these small, uh, small um, cucumbers, so it's really hard to spiralize them. But uh, when I was at Doug, it was uh, 2016, I was pregnant, six months pregnant at Culinary Skills Week, and we had such great cucumbers, it was just a pleasure to spiralize them. Anyway. So those are uh, the cucumbers and they're going into the salad. And uh, that's it, that's the same way I do uh, for, the, for the leaves uh, and for the zucchinis and I have this salad. And now what I'm going to do is a dressing. And um, I can do, a, I sometimes do a dressings in a blender but I have a really simple dressing that I go to whenever I wanna do something uh, kind of quick. And it consists of two or three ingredients. It's almond butter, and it's uh, a juice of uh, an orange and, and a juice of a lemon and a lime. And I just mix them all in a bowl. And uh, as you were talking yesterday, as I know from you, your fats are kind of measured uh, and uh, Shari's too and mine too. So I take a uh, maximum two, uh, two spoons, two tablespoons of almond butter. And I just squeeze some, uh, some orange and a lime. I really like the limes now. Lime wakes everything up, even any salad, just squeezing a little lime over the top, just it's so yes. I agree. So that would be all. And I sit and mix it for, uh, for a good minute until it's uh, becoming a, with good consistency. And it's simple as that. What's good in blended uh, dressings is that the blender uh, stretches uh, a small amount of fat over a whole lot of volume. 
Um, but even such a small volume can coat a really big salad. You just have to have one thing for it to work, and that's bait. Yeah. So this is my dressing. I don't know if you can see it. It's not a lot, but it's thick, and it's, uh, it has a lot of fat in it, so it coats the salad well. And I'm going to pour it over the salad. Dates are a pretty popular food in Israel in general, aren't they? Even for people that aren't they are. really raw. They're very uh, popular. They are a lot of kinds of dates and they grow up on the trees. In my city, there is a, there's a boulevard when uh, dates grow from the two sides of the street. And I sometimes go and pick them in season because um, the city hall, they don't, um, they don't spray them with anything. They don't uh, treat them. Um, so... Uh, they have these regulations, so all the dates are untreated. They're not, um, uh, what do you call it, that they have... Uh, They're not sprayed uh, with anything. Yeah, with nothing. And dates, dates kind of grow pretty naturally. But there's also a, a tendency to eat too many dates in Israel since they're so, um, so common. I live in the, one of the date capitals of the world, Indio, California. We actually, well, when there's not a pandemic, have a date festival every year. It's quite extraordinary. Wow, yeah, I know you have a lot of kinds of dates there. Yeah, we have date, I mean, date farms, date trees everywhere. And uh, yeah, wow. it's the, all the varieties. It's, it's just a date lover's dream here. So that's the salad. By the way, this date that I'm showing you doesn't consist of any dates at all. Sometimes I have dates where I would combine dates, but. Not today, not needed. So I'm taking kind of a scoop of the salad and I'm placing it on the, on the sushi, on the nori roll. And I'm putting it on half of the nori roll and I try to put it nicely. Uh, there are those uh, mats that you can roll with them and make it more elegant, but I really like to do it with my hands. So works better this way. And I roll and then I tighten once, it, once I got it over uh, the, all the sushi, I tighten. And this roll is ready. And I'm gonna let it sit for two minutes because all the moisture uh, absorbs into the nori roll and then it's easier to cut. And in the meantime, I prepared in advance a few of those rolls. So let me show you. The, those rolls, can you see them? Oh, they, they look beautiful. Yeah, so those are, let's say, three or four nori rolls, and I'm gonna add the one that we made right now. And when you try to cut a uh, raw sushi, it's not as starchy as, uh, as cooked sushi. So there are two things that are important. Um, it's important that you tighten up the roll as you do it, and that you have a really good knife. That's always important with sushi, right? So what I do is I cut it right in the middle. I don't know if you can see it. I cut it right in the middle, and then I work with two hands uh, holding each side of the roll, and the, um, the knife is right in between, and I go and I make the other cuts, and I work in, I work in a long uh, cutting uh, uh, movement. Like I go back and forth, and that's what helps the sushi get cut nicely. Are you using a serrated knife? Uh, I have one, uh, but I didn't have, um, what do you call the thing that sharpens the blade? Oh, um, a knife, sharp knife sharpener, a stone? A stone, yeah, I guess. They need a special thing for it, and I don't have it. So, so it's, uh, it took a break until I get it. Do you like ceramic knives? Have one? Um, yeah, I do. I think they're they're, they're they they work really, They're very sharp. They're very sharp. Yes, until they're not. Yeah. All right. So let me just show you one of these new rolls that I got. This is how it looks like. It's pretty moist inside. It's pretty nice. It has a lot of um, leafy greens. Oh, and you know what? I forgot to add um, some green onions. I always add some herbs. I love the taste of herbs on sushi. So I always add them. And that amount right here 
would compare to, to an average uh, meal of mine to lunch. Do so, you ever drizzle your salad dressing over it? Yes, I do. It looks better. <laughs> it looks better, but I do. Sometimes I just don't put the dressing. I, I can show you another option of it. So that's, that's lunch for me. After the stato of some fruit, that would be lunch. Let me show you another option. I want people to see other options to do to make the sushi because sometimes people are afraid to do complicated things and they want things simpler. So I'll show you what I do when I don't have time in my hands at all and I still want to eat well. What I do is I just take the leaves whole like that, a bunch of leaves, and I stack them on the nori sheet, not cut, don't need to make any salads. I take a few strips of uh, cucumbers and I place them on the nori. And I would take two sprigs of uh, green onion, only the green part. And I just make a kind of um, a roll from all of it. I stick them together and I roll them. Now with this kind of roll, it's not moist. The leaves are, um, are uh, dry. So what I do is I take a lemon or, uh, or an orange and I uh, put it over the, uh, the part of the nori that has to close. So what I'm gonna do is just uh, place it over so it becomes wet. And it's done. Now what I do is I make those five rolls and I either eat them like that as a whole or I cut them in the middle. They cut pretty nicely. And that's a really easy and simple and quick uh, lunch. What do you think? Would you have uh, such a lunch, a lunch with uh, so many uh, leafy greens and vegetables? Absolutely. That actually looks really delicious. You would, yeah, I know. That's the thing. What, one thing I really admire about you guys is you, you're not just eating fruit, you're eating so many leafy greens and you're not doing... That, that there's this other version of the raw diet that I, I think I'll wait till Friday to ask Dr. Graham about it, but that is so high in fat. People are doing like a raw keto. And I just, I can't imagine just avoiding fruit and just eating fat. Yeah, right, right. Well, nature kind of intended us, intended us to have both uh, sweet tooth, the uh, uh, craving for sweet uh, foods and the craving for salty or savory foods. And vegetables, they answer that craving for salty foods. So if I have a craving for salty foods, I know I probably didn't have enough vegetables or I didn't have enough of any nutrients that I needed, even if I had. So what I do if I have those cravings, I just go for the vegetables. And even though they don't seem too salty, for especially for people that are used to uh, dishes, that cook dishes with salt uh, or heavy uh, condiments, even though they don't seem too salty, once I have a few good uh, vegetables or a giant salad, I'm I'm pretty satiated with that uh, with that craving. I'm 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 pretty um, satisfied. So I think nature intended us to uh, to have a lot of leafy greens. It's not uh, it's not for nothing. Yep, that makes sense. And fats they're not found in nature in those amounts. Oh no, and they're not found. I mean, like, think about it. Nuts. I mean, people don't realize that nuts are not these things that you get in Costco in a three pound bag that have been shelled for you and roasted. Right. And it not only has a shell, then it's got a, I should bring it out. I actually have a real nut. It's like the size of a softball. Like our, how are our ancestors getting in there and eating an ounce a day? I mean, it would take an hour to open one of them. Right. And that's what nature intended. And they even hold on for a long time. So if you're in your, uh, if we were back in nature in our cave, uh, we would have those nuts stacked in a corner waiting for those days when it's raining outside and I can't go up, out and uh, pick up um, some oranges. And I would probably do the same with potatoes and yams and root vegetables. That's plan B. That's why I don't uh, disqualify them totally. Uh, but they're plan B. I don't feel as good with the cook. I don't feel as good with them. Um, uh, with um, uh, fats, a lot of fats. And that's, that's not a natural thing. That's a uh, modern world brought it to us. Uh, I wouldn't have so many almonds so easily in nature. 
And I kind of try to remember that. And when I remember that, it's easy to keep it low fat. That's true. Do you, you know, I'm surprised that more of the raw food community isn't using this wonderful machine that I have called the Nutramilk because I, I, I don't eat any overt fats. I haven't for 10 years. I'm not dead yet, but my husband is very, very slender and he needs more fat. And I have this machine that like in three minutes makes nut butter out of any raw nut or seed. It's fantastic. And I saved so much money doing that. I saw this, uh, what's it called, Nutramilk? Nutramilk. I, I don't know if they ship to Israel, but they'll have specials again. And I'll tell you, it's a, and it also makes plant milk and it makes raw vegetable broth. You just put like your vegetables in and it's like you have broth. It's amazing. I, I, I'm surprised more raw fooders aren't, uh, aren't, aren't knowing about it. Adina says, do you eat avocado? Yeah, of course I eat avocados, yeah. Um, avocados are fat, they're fatty fruits, but I don't treat them quite the same as nuts. Uh, nature put them on uh, on trees so we could pick them and they're more abundant and more easily digested and the nuts they have they're more hydrated and so I, I do eat avocados and I usually prefer them over uh, over nuts or seeds definitely nice and she also had a question about the weather where you live in Israel she said how cold does it get in your winter and do you change your diet in any way during the winter Yes, that's a good question. Uh, if, uh, Israel is kind of a comfortable country to live in. It gets cold in the winter, but low as it gets is five degrees. It doesn't get under uh, under zero. So uh, even though it's cold, do you mean Fahrenheit or centigrade? Five. No, centigrade, centigrade. Okay, so so okay, because okay, five degrees Fahrenheit is really cold. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so it doesn't get sub sub zero in um, in Celsius. Um, so you get warm by uh, dressing up warm and uh, what I do in winter, in winter I tend to eat a little bit more fat, more avocados, that's avocado season uh, also in Israel, and in summer I tend to eat less fat. I have days, I have full days without eating fat and I, I feel great about it in summer, it feels, more, uh, it feels more comfortable. So generally I would have less fat in my diet in summer, more fat in my diet at winter, but not a whole lot of more fat. Like it wouldn't be 10%, it would be 15 and maximum days would be 20. And uh, day after that, I wouldn't want to eat uh, fat probably. So, uh, so that's how I change my diet in Israel. And I sometimes um, do like warm drinks. I use the blender and I make warm drinks, not hot boiling hot drinks, but warm to have kind of a, um, kind of a warm tea with leaves and, uh, and some uh, dates and then maybe some uh, condiments like, uh, like chai, masala um, uh, condiment. So I sometimes do that. Other than that, uh, it's, it's pretty much the same and every winter that I experience as a raw vegan, I'm not as cold as I used to be. I, I used to suffer from being cold a lot and now I'm not as cold as I used to be and uh, it feels easier and more intuitive to, uh, to eat raw foods even when it's cold. I'm not expecting food to warm me up as much and I'm also aware of the fact that um, eating cooked foods only warms us up for a minute. After that we have to digest them and that, uh, that kind of, kind of uh, freezes us because a lot of energy is going towards digestion when we eat uh, cooked heavy foods. Right. Uh, Misty, who's watching live, says, I'm trying to be more raw. I've been vegan for eight years. I still eat vegan sweets, but I have high blood pressure. I would love to reverse it and get off my medication. I hear such great things about going more raw or fully raw to try to naturally lower my blood pressure. I'm looking forward to learning more about this raw lifestyle. So I'm sure Dr. Graham can answer your blood pressure questions if you come back on Friday. And Ifa, there's a question. If, is, does Israel have the most vegan restaurants than any other country? Is that true? That could be true. I think that Tel Aviv uh, is kind of a kind of a capital of uh, uh, veganist, veganism uh, in, uh, in culinary. They're all filled with lots of olive oil, right? Uh, probably, yeah. Yeah. And there's a question: Do you eat the seeds of your watermelon, and do you try to choose organic as much as possible? Well, no, and yes. <laughs> I don't eat the seeds of the watermelon. I just don't feel that the, they need to be eaten. Uh, I just take them out. Um, and um, I do try to eat as much uh, as I can uh, organic. And every year I get more uh, higher percentage of the bulk that I buy that's, uh, that's organic. I definitely eat uh, the um, uh, leafy greens organic, vegetables uh, organic. 
if I get something that's not organic, uh, then I try to peel it. And I try to uh, follow the, um, the line, the guidelines of the EWG um, for, uh, for the clean 15 and dirty dozen, showing uh, uh, the foods that uh, are less and more contaminated when they're not organic. So what's more contaminated, I definitely make a point of uh, getting organic. Great. Did you know that you could take the seeds from the watermelon and make a uh, watermelon seed milk in the Nutra milk machine? Oh, wow. I did it in the Vitamix from uh, melon seeds. And it was nice. Isn't that cool? Anyway, people are thanking you very much for the free ebook. It's posted in the show notes, but I'm also posting it in the chat. If people want to sign up for it, just click the link. And Mandy said that five degrees centigrade is 41 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's not terribly cold. Right. That's the lowest we get here. Yeah, and that, yeah, that for me, that would be freezing, but it's, but for regular people, that's tolerable. I mean, most oh. days you're 100 to 120. So when you say, you know, five degrees, I'm like, whoa, it sounds like most it's days, most days of winter would be 70 uh, Fahrenheit, like uh, 20, uh, 15 to 20 uh, Celsius degrees. That's yeah. manageable. That is not too bad. All right. So, so we got breakfast, we got lunch. So you, 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 you eat about four times a day. Is that correct? Usually the one of the meals is a kind of a snack. I'm breastfeeding now and I, I went to, through a, two uh, raw food pregnancies and two uh, uh, breastfeeding periods. So um, when I'm breastfeeding, the first year that I'm breastfeeding, I usually want more food. I, I'm usually hungrier and I get to eat four times a day. But now I mean, uh, she's almost two years old. I'm in the second year of breastfeeding and I don't breast, breast, breastfeed as much, only two, three times a day. I go for three meals a day. Each meal would be big. And uh, I think that after that, I will probably get back to what I was used to, which is two big meals a day and another one that's smaller, that's a snack. It's more comfortable for me. I don't like to uh, um, mess with food for, for, all, for all day long. I just want to eat. I want to be satiated and not think about it. And I go back to eat when I'm hungry. You know, that's incredible, two raw pregnancies. It sounds like you should write a book on that because so many people, even with just vegan pregnancies, not even healthy vegan diets, they get pushback from their OBGYN about having just vegan pregnancies. Did you have any pushback having a 100% raw pregnancy? Uh, I wasn't expecting to consult anyone to give me any approvals. Once I got pregnant, it was even clearer to me that um, I feel best on raw foods. I, uh, knock on wood, I had such great two pregnancies. I was uh, energetic. I didn't have any um, side effects that are common in pregnancies. And uh, I was feeling on top of my game. And uh, every time that I strayed from raw foods and I ate something else, uh, it really hit me that, uh, that I feel not as good. And, uh, and I just didn't want it. So that was the reason for me even more to keep my, uh, to keep my uh, eating style uh, uh, when I was pregnant. Does your husband eat like you or at least does he support the way you eat? He's totally supportive and he made a, a huge change in his diet. He eats uh, vegan, mostly uh, raw and whole foods. Nice. What, what recipes that you make that you enjoy that your family also enjoys? You mean raw food recipes? Yeah, or yeah, raw yeah, food what, recipes? Like, which, yeah, either way, but I'm just curious, like, because when people think raw food is so extreme, I mean, there are things that regular people that aren't even vegan eat raw. Like, for example, salsa. That's raw. Everybody loves salsa. Guacamole. Right. That's raw. Everybody loves salsa. Fruit. I mean, so, so like, it, like, we have to demystify that raw food is, is like food. <laughs> I mean, right. You know, people so, eat, they don't realize it. Like when they're having their chips and salsa or chips and guacamole, often with unfortunately beer, they're basically eating raw food. Yeah, we kind of eat raw food all the time. And you know what? My kids love this sushi. They love it. They just love my, my daughter, not two years old even, she was munching on the sushi as I prepared it today and she couldn't stop. And she loves the greens and the salads. I don't know why, but she loves them. Uh, and that's uh, what you, you know, maybe, excuse me for interrupting, maybe because that's what you ate when you were pregnant. And I've seen some research that shows that kids love what their mom ate when they were pregnant, which is why I grew up loving M&Ms with peanuts, because that's all my mom ate, apparently. Wow. <laughs> I don't eat them anymore, by the way. They're not vegan. But I mean, but but then, you know, I couldn't figure out why do I love, you know, my grandfather, too. So, I, you know, what'd you eat when you're pregnant? Yeah, M&Ms with peanuts. Ooh, go figure. 
And I make ice creams. It's so easy to make a raw ice cream just out of bananas and blueberries and something. And actually our dinner that we're going to make right now uh, is something that my kids really like. And I usually make uh, like a, a whole big uh, blender full of it. And I just pour it into uh, two plates and everybody's eating from it. So um, I'll show you what I have for dinner usually. Great. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. This one is the first time that I activated the blender in my day. And um, I chose to show you a, a dinner of a green smoothie bowl. So what I'm going to use, I have um, some, uh, some bananas, some are frozen, some are fresh, and we're going to use both. And I heard yesterday, Shari said that, Dad, you like your bananas uh, <laughs> frozen. You like to eat them uh, as they are. I don't like to eat them frozen. I have to blend them. But uh, my daughter uh, has the same uh, hobby as you do. She likes to eat them frozen. So I'm going to put, uh, like, uh, those are small bananas. I'm going to uh, put a whole lot of bananas. I planned on six, but those are small. I'll go for eight. And uh, let's do it all from the frozen one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. OK. So this is a dish for me. Uh, it would be eight small bananas or six, uh, six medium ones, and it would, it would be considered a whole lot for someone that's not in this lifestyle. But this thing is satiating. And um, and I just wouldn't give uh, up this lifestyle, no matter what. So what I'm adding to these uh, bananas are some greens. And we use the lettuce and some leaves uh, at lunch. So now I, what I'm going to use is some celery sticks and some parsley. Parsley, a little bit of parsley and a green smoothie takes it uh, to a whole new level for me. I like the kick of it. Not too much, just a little. You know, when I went to culinary school, I went to Rock Culinary School, Living Light, and when they taught us how to make banana ice cream, instead of using spoons, we used celery as that, that was our spoon so that we could kind of balance the blood sugar with taking a bite of the celery. And it's actually pretty good mixing celery with banana. Right, right, it's a perfect combination. So that's basically what's going on in this uh, green smoothie. I'm going to add just a little bit of water. It's not needed for the Vitamix. And sometimes I don't add the water and sometimes just a little bit. And what that's the, the last thing that I'm going to add is not traditionally an 80 10 can uh, food and it's chia seeds. I add one uh, tablespoon of chia seeds. Um, chia seeds are kind of a uh, bird food to me. They're not meant to be consumed by humans. Uh, so I think, however, I think there's a really big problem today with omega-3s that are lacking in our nutrition. For me, it was lacking for uh, more than 30 years. And it's, um, it's even more important for, for uh, pregnancy and breastfeeding. And that's why I tend uh, to add them uh, to my lifestyle. It doesn't have to be uh, chia seeds because um, a lot of fruits also have omega-3s. Uh, but sometimes it's comfortable to have them. And I tested for omega-3s. I wasn't happy enough with the result. And that's why I'm incorporating them until I get my omegas uh, to the level that I want them. And then uh, I'll probably say bye to uh, chia seeds and I'll stick to mangoes or other fruits that have uh, omega-3s. Did you know that there are fruits that have good amounts of omega-3s? There are fruits, I know that greens had a good amount. What fruits have good amounts of omega-3? Okay, so here it goes. Cherimoya is a queen of omega-3. Three cherimoyas and you got uh, a gram and a half of omega-3s for your day. And that's more than your uh, daily requirement. And I love cherimoyas. Mangoes have a great amount of omega-3s, three to four mangoes a day, which we easily eat in a raw food diet would give us uh, all the omega-3s we need. And so do melons. Uh, any kind of melon, a honeydew melon, uh, uh, Santa Claus smell, and, uh, any kind of melon contains a good amount of omega-3s, and the last thing, are papayas, uh, that also contain great amounts of omega-3s. 
And there's some in blueberries, some in kiwis, but not a whole lot. And we don't tend to eat a whole lot of kiwis and blueberries. But if you stick to uh, papayas, melons, mangoes, and cherry moyas, you would easily get uh, good amounts of omega-3s. And together with the greens, the lettuce, and the spinach, alfalfa sprouts, they also contain uh, good amounts of omega-3s, then, then you're good. And you don't even need the fats like chia seeds or hemp seeds or uh, uh, or flex, which I don't uh, tend to use. Um, so that's also an interesting thing. People think that uh, vegan is, uh, vegans are uh, deficient in omega-3s and uh, raw food is even more, but that's not true. I think what we do more than other people is test. <laughs> well, because, Robbie, uh, Robbie Barbera blew everybody out of the water. He has like literally the highest levels of omega-3 of any person that I've ever oh, wow. and. Uh, <laughs> He, he follows this way of eating. So I think people worry more about deficiencies than they need to when the true problem in the world is excess, dietary excess. Robbie gets a lot of mangoes and cherry moyas where he lives. And he loves that. What's that thing, Mamie Puposa? What is that thing that everybody oh, wow. loves? Mamie Puposa or, or something like that. I don't know. Man, what it's, it's a pote, yeah. That's a pote. I, I don't think we can get it here, but uh, he, everybody goes crazy for those. Yeah. So, okay, I'm going to blend this one. Uh, will the Zoom shut it down? I, Zoom has been really good about muting it lately, so give it a try. Okay. That's fine. I can't hear it. Now you're going to have to hear from me for a minute. Guys, well, thank you guys so much for being here for Raw Food Week. We have two more great speakers this week coming. We're going to end the week on Friday with Dr. Doug Graham, and I know there's going to be many questions, so send them in in advance because we give those priority. And Dr. Rosalind Graham is going to be on tomorrow, so we have a wonderful full week planned for you. And next week on the show is Iron Chef Week. We've got 12, chef, 12 chefs competing. Actually, two of the days are from Raw Chefs, so it's going to be fantastic. They are not going to know the ingredients until right right when the show starts. So uh, maybe I can ask Dr. Graham some good ingredients to give to the six, uh, to the four raw chefs. I mean, I don't want to trick them. The purpose of the Iron Chef Week is to come home, you see what you have in the house and make something. But for the raw chefs, maybe he could give me six, six suggestions, three for one chef and three for the other. So that, but because they can use anything in their pantry. So it's, they're not excluded, but they have to use the three ingredients. So That'll be interesting to see what they come up with. The raw chefs that, were, that are doing the competition next week are Chef Ocean versus Chef Sant. And we have Lissa Maris versus Chris Kendall. So we've got two uh, full raw competitions and the rest are people like, uh, who do we have? We have Chef Darshna Thacker from Forks Over Knives against Chef Kelly Williamson. We've got, oh, we've got a really fun show. We've got vendors against each other, not chefs. So we have Nick from Local Spicery, Thomas from California Balsamic, and they're gonna send each other their product and they have to use them. It's gonna be a very interesting show. So are you back, Ifet? Yeah, I'm back. And that's ready. You can check it out and then we'll pour it in a bowl. So it's, it's not real thick. It's almost like a soup consistency. No, it's much thicker than a soup. It's, it's more of a mousse consistency. Nice. So what I really like in my smoothies is to top them because that's how I chew them best. Okay? I don't just swallow them. I chew them. That's why I put them in a bowl. That's why I eat them with a spoon and it makes digestion better. So what I brought today for topping them is the few grapes and a few raisins but you can top them with anything. I sometimes top my banana smoothies with another banana and that's it. Dina said, did you become raw because of the 80-10-10 program or did you learn about it after becoming raw? And how did you hear about it in Israel? A good question. Uh, I became raw. I became raw because of the 80 10 10. I started incorporating more raw foods into my diet um, because I was exposed to other books like uh, Eat to Live by Joel Foreman, uh, Mark Hyman's books, Victoria Butenko's books, Harvey and Marilyn Diamond's books, the, all the classics in uh, natural hygiene and, uh, and healthy eating. And then I found about uh, raw foods from, uh, from the 80 10 10 uh, diet and I decided to try it. And, um, 
There was no looking back. That's great. Well, you look fantastic and I'm sure you feel great. You must have a lot of energy keeping up with two little kids under the age of five. I don't know how I would do it if not for Ruffles. I'm saying thanks like almost every week I have a moment that I say thank God that I uh, was able to wake up three times a night to breastfeed and I still have energy to work out in the morning and I have a good mood and that's that's due to this lifestyle. Wow well you're a walking testimonial that that looks delicious the dish that you just prepared maybe come up a little closer and show it. Yeah. So this is what it looks like. It came out a little bit um, um, yellowish color. It us it's usually more green, but I put up a whole lot of bananas. And that would be dinner. That's a, that's a really big bowl. That's a pasta bowl. It's not some kind of a small one. I love those pasta bowls and they, they make for, for good um, amounts of food for me. I, you know, whether it's your version of the low fat vegan diet or mine, which obviously includes some starch, I just, I love calorie density. I love that we get to eat so much food. It's incredible to me how much you get to eat and not be overweight or have a disease. It's like, I just, thank you, Barbara Rolls. I mean, calorie density is amazing, isn't it? You can get a whole lot of volume and you can feel satiated, not only from a uh, widening our stomachs, uh, but, uh, but also from the nutri nutrients that, that are in the foods. Wow. Well, this has just been such a pleasure. You're really just very delightful. And uh, I really enjoyed learning from you. And I did sign up for your free ebook. And I love to learn more. <laughs> thank you, AJ. It was a pleasure and a privilege to be here with you. Absolutely. And thank you for being on the show. And thank you, Dr. Graham, for another wonderful recommendation. And please come back tomorrow for day four of Raw Food Week when we have Professor Rosalind Graham. Thanks, everybody. Take care, Ifat. Shalom. Bye-bye.